Is there something distinct and coherent that we can call American Islam? And if so, is it conservative, liberal, progressive, reactionary? Where do US Muslims stand on some of the big social and moral issues that Americans have been grappling with in recent years? On feminism and gender equality? How about same-sex marriage, legalized by the US Supreme Court in July and now backed by a majority of US voters? Do Muslim Americans themselves believe there's an inherent tension between traditional Islamic values and US liberal values? With me to debate these questions are Linda Sarsour, civil rights activist, executive director of the Arab American Association of New York, and one of the country's most vocal young Muslim American advocates, in the words of the New York Times. And Dr. Yasser Ghazi, a leading American Muslim scholar, dean of the Al Maghrib Institute, and a graduate of both Medina and Yale universities. Welcome to the arena, both of you. Thank, Thank you for having, having us. Um, Yasser Qazi, you're an American of Pakistani origin. Yes. Educated in the US, educated in Saudi Arabia. <laughs> in your view, is there a distinct American Islam that we can speak of, that we can point to? Uh, so there's no doubt that Muslims are living with distinct problems here in America, and those problems have unique solutions. If you want to call it American Islam, there, that term has its pros and cons. Personally, I would be averse to using something like American Islam or Canadian Islam or Mexican Islam. Nonetheless, there's an undeniable reality that American Muslims have unique circumstances. We have our own issues that we have to grapple with. And because of that, yes, there is going to be a, an expression of Islam that is unique for our time and place. Personally, I just don't like using the term American Islam. But inherently, yes, there is something that is unique to our time and place that Muslims are practicing in this land. Linda, is that a phrase you like, American Islam? I also don't uh, agree with that uh, phrase. I think uh, Muslims in America are also not a monolith. Um, we are conservative, traditional, progressive, liberal. We're Shia, we're Sunni, we're all types of Muslims. So I don't like this label of that there's a such thing as an American Islam. Much of the debate, much of the hysteria in America about Islam and Muslims is to do with they're very different. Mm -hmm. They have different mm -hmm. way of life, a different approach. In your view, Yasser Qazi, is there a clash between Western or American liberal secular values and traditional Islamic values? There's not. The, the word clash is really harsh. There is the possibility of compatibility. Uh, and there is the potential for clash. But if both sides work for peace, if both sides agree for compromise, uh, it is a very realistic and doable situation where even conservative Muslims can live and flourish and be a part of mainstream America. But there's no denying that the basic premise of Islam is, might be slightly different than the basic premise of liberalism. Could you argue that there's a barrier towards Muslims in integrating into American public life if American public life is defined around a set of values which Muslims not ne don't necessarily share? Well, Muslims. even the term integration is somewhat ambiguous. I mean, uh, are the Amish a part of the American framework? Are the ultra-Orthodox Jews of Brooklyn and, and New York a part of the American framework? <sighs> so the the term integration but, uh, but the itself. Amish, the Amish are what, 100,000, 200,000 people, uh, you know, living pretty much in isolation with no access to technology. Is that really the benchmark for well, the no, US I'm Muslim not, experience? I'm not talking about the benchmark. Many I'm would say that's not a very good model, no, if that's I'm, your I'm, model. Oh, no, I'm not, talk I'm not talking about that as a model. I'm saying this, this notion that somehow you have to, quote unquote, integrate in order to be a part of America. I'm challenging that notion. Well, that was what I was we'll challenging. We'll come back to what makes you American. Let me just ask uh, Linda this question. You're associated uh, with liberal causes, uh, with liberal movements here in the US. Uh, can you be uh, both a card-carrying liberal and a practicing, America, a practicing Muslim in America today? I am a living example of a card-carrying liberal and a practicing Muslim in America. And it's not because I'm American. It's because I actually believe in the causes that I work towards when, that are social justice, that are the foundation of the religion that I practice of Islam and being able to stand up for the most marginalized and most ostracized of our nation, which oftentimes also includes Muslims, is very dear and near and, and foundational to the Islam that I follow. You have, here in America even, you have a lot okay. of uh, Muslim women uh, complaining about how they're treated in the public space. There have been calls for women-only mosques. Mm -hmm. Some would say that's evidence that American Islam, or whatever phrase you want to give to describe Muslims in America, is, has the same issues of patriarchy, of misogyny, of gender inequality that other Muslim communities around the world share. Well, so if you look at my track record, uh, I, I, I would come in the middle here and I would say, look, there's no doubt there's a clear problem uh, of the way women are treated in the masjids and the mosques, the fact that they're not given equal access, the fact that they're even told not to go to some mosques. So definitely, I'm of those that are calling for some type of reform within uh, the framework of Islam. But I personally am not going to go to the other side of saying there should be women-only mosques or whatnot. I think that's also exclusionary. Look, the reality on the ground is, and we know this, um, and we're not having a theological debate, but Islam is a, a religion that empowers women. Let's 
put that out there. But the way it's Muslims and mostly Muslim men in our country here in the United States who are actually continuing to perpetuate some of the stereotypes that we have about Muslims. Women-only mosques are only being created because they don't find a role in the mosque to play. Let's look at the majority of mosques in America, Islamic institutions, majority male boards, if not only male boards, right? Uh, issues that are impacting women, domestic violence, utter silence across the country on domestic violence in the American Muslim community, sexual assault in the Muslim community. We've watched scandals across the country. So I think, the, the, for me, the, the question is, yes, there are problems, yes, there are solutions, but who's implementing them? This well, is something again, we need to I would say, towards. I would say that you need to look at individual track records. I myself have been extremely active in my own communities, wherever I've been, uh, and I, I think it's a living testament to the fact that every community that I have been a part of, definitely we have women on our boards. Our masjid is, is the most women-friendly, family-friendly masjid in our community. And I think that if you do a little bit of research, you will actually find most second-generation American clerics are actually supporting of these types You're with of the changes. Al Maghrib Institute. How many women out of the? I think there are 19 instructors. How many women are there? Uh, the right now we have one, one and we are so looking one out for of another. 19. Is that really? But 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 let me flip the situation around. And say is that you flip because it 18 is, and one. If that if that's because is that because we are purposely hiring men only, or is that because the sad reality is, and this is beyond Al Maghrib or any institute many women are not actually training in the Islamic sciences. The question is, how are we doing that, right? So they're saying that we welcome it and not actually putting anything in place to make that happen. How are we encouraging young women uh, in the Muslim community to become scholars and to be educated? How are we supporting and creating more institutions like Zaytuna College and others? And that's the thing. We talk a lot about the solutions, but the progress and the actual work. And I'm an activist, so I work. This, you know, that, what are we doing here's to Here's the irony, Linda. Uh, our institute, on average, we have 60 to 65 percent women attending our seminars. From the very beginning, we've always had a majority of, of sisters attending. If anything, we're the ones empowering women by giving them access to Islamic knowledge. At those seminars, a lot of your critics would say, you, you've said stuff like, um, you said, a woman should respect her husband's judgment, even if he's wrong. Many people watch you would say, that's not modern America, that's 1950s America. Well, it's American, but it's honest, a different To be honest, I don't era. know where you're getting that particular clip from. And also, I myself have gone through a number of phases in my life, so I don't know when and where it's that a, particular... It's a talk you gave recently, which that, is on YouTube, about w uh, what women should know about men, I believe, is the, ne is the title of the talk. Quarter of a million people have watched it. It's a oh, well, in that, well, I mean, again, you're you're giving one particular quote. That's not your view. It's That's not your view. That no, women I'm should. saying I'm saying there's a more nuanced thing in that very talk. I also talked about what men should do with, uh, you know, to respect their their wives as well. Well, let me make a broader point then. Across the discourse that you hear from Muslim leaders, community leaders, uh, imams, etc., scholars, do do you think the discourse gets it right on gender equality issues right now? I think in 2015, we are still not getting it right. And I can tell you from across the country, including criticism of some of the scholars around issues of domestic violence, talking about sexual assault, and even going to the point of defending some of, some folks who have been excused, accused of sexual assault in the Muslim community. We've seen people come out in support, not necessarily Dr. Qadi, but there have been others. And it, it, what it does is it pushes women out of the mosque. And I, th and I say, if there are no women in the mosque, there are no children in the mosque. So we have to think about how do we create inclusive spaces? And the way you do that is by talking about about the issues that are most dear to the women who are raising our children in our community. Well, you, I agree with that, you 100%. Mentioned, you mentioned your talk on marriage. It was a talk on marriage. Of course, marriage in America uh, is now extended to same-sex couples. It's now a constitutional right. Mm -hmm. uh, a majority of Americans support same-sex marriage. A majority of Muslim Americans are opposed to same-sex marriage. Do you see that being a problem? We talked earlier about integration, not a word you like, but do you see that as a problem uh, in your vision of coexistence between Muslim Americans and non-Muslim Americans, given that the values now on these issues seem to be so different, so far apart? Uh, I don't necessarily see this as a problem. Once again, uh, so American Muslims have the freedom to drink, to, to have premarital, extramarital, uh, extramarital intercourse. Does that mean they should engage in those freedoms? American Muslims have the freedom to take drugs in certain states now. It's all legal. Does that mean they should go and do that? So we've been battling with this issue of public freedom versus private morality from day one. But, but especially in the West, where gay rights have become such an important issue, such an important right, uh, in the last 10, 20 years, isn't there a danger that Muslims are therefore left behind and seen as the kind of the odd group in the corner who aren't on the same 
train in the same direction. Well, we're not alone else. in this regard. A lot of uh, you're saying a majority of American Muslims feel a certain way. I would say other groups as well have certain uh, ideas. And the fact that we don't agree with the Supreme Court ruling ethically and morally doesn't make us any less of American. Let me give you an example. What percentage of, let's say, Baptists or, or, or Christians uh, don't approve of, of, uh, of abortion? A very high percentage, 30 to 35 percent. Does that mean that they're un-American because they disagree with Roe versus Wade? So there's a difference between, look, we understand the legal system is going one way, but we have the personal and the private religious okay. right to go another Let way. Let me put that to Linda. You're an American Muslim civil rights activist. You campaign against Islamophobia and in favor of Muslim civil rights, but you also campaign against homophobia and in favor of LGBT rights. Do you see that as all part of the same struggle? Absolutely, and I will say this about American Muslims, there has not been any coordinated, coordinated campaign oppositional to the Supreme Court um, decision for same-sex marriage. So this is a civil rights issue. We have no place as American Muslims targeted in the United States of America to oppose another marginalized group in this country, which includes LGBTQ communities. I think what the conversation around same-sex marriage uh, opens in the Muslim community that we don't have, we don't even have this conversation, is that we do have people in our community. We can't be like Ahmed Dijanad and say we don't have gay Muslims. We do have. How do we integrate them into a conversation? How do we create the spaces to bring them closer to Islam, for example? We need to make sure that everyone's included. Well, let me put that point to Yasser Well, Fazi. that's exactly what I've been doing, Linda. If you actually listen to the lectures mm -hmm. that are on YouTube, uh, I would say I'm one of the very few clerics that have very publicly said that people who have whatever personal issues that they have, whether it's same sex, whether it's drugs, whether it's alcohol, it's not our right mm -hmm. to judge them. They are welcome in our communities. You, would you tell them not to come to the masjid? You'd be happy. You're coming comparing to the a gay Muslim to no, a No, I'm comparing a sin to a sin. I'm not comparing the person but to the person. But it's a sin in your view. If a gay Muslim comes to see you and says, I'm well, struggling with well, my sexuality. If a, if a is person's he having an affair, it's a sin. If a person's having a premarital intercourse, it's a sin. The theology of Islam is not going to change. Same-sex unions are an immoral issue. Whether the political freedom is given to them or not, I actually agree with Linda here, is that I understand the American government should not be in the job of policing morality. But, but do, you that see doesn't how, change do you see the, how that's problematic for a lot of people listening who will say, you say they're welcome in your mosque, but they're welcome as sinners, and that might make well, people no, not feel our, it's not our it's not our uh, job to judge others I'm willing to allow them their rights are they willing to allow me my rights? when you say you're willing to allow them their rights their political rights you, their political so you rights. support same-sex marriage I support the notion that the American government is not in charge of morality okay, so you're that's not opposed to same-sex marriage Politically, yes, but le but morally, I, I I don't agree with this. So there's a there's a distinction. But as a law of the land, you're not. I agree. Campaigning to I, change yeah, the of law course not. No, it. I'm not. Okay, let me uh, ask you this question, Linda. I mean, Yasser Khazi has talked a great deal about people in the mosque. He mentioned sin. Uh, in a recent New York Times profile, one of your mentors, an imam in New York, said Linda's candid about not being quote unquote particularly religious. Uh, what do you say to those? maybe more conservative critics within your community who might say, well, you can't credibly speak on behalf of a religious community if you're not religious yourself. I say that I'm an American Muslim and I have every right to talk about my experience as an American Muslim and talk about the Islam. I, I practice Islam and I'm very proud of my religion. And I'm also very clear that I'm not an Islamic scholar and that I'm not out here lecturing about Islam because that is not my expertise but that I am an American Muslim and I have a right, I represent a community, I work in a community and I have a right to stand up and speak mm -hmm. on behalf of Muslims because not all Muslims are the same. I have a perspective to share, Dr. Qadi has a uh, perspective to share. So what there. do you think is the biggest challenge for American Muslims going forward? I think the, the biggest challenge for American Muslims is really to start talking about the issues most directly impacting Muslims here. Oftentimes we are, you know, we are, many of us derive from countries where there are conflict and we're worrying about what's happening in Syria and in Pakistan and Iraq. But there are issues that are happening right here in our own backyard, poverty right here in our own backyard, social justice issues, health care access, education reform. Let's start fixing our problems here. Let's start building our capacity and power here as American Muslims. And maybe we can then impact what's happening on the other side of the world. But until then, we need to build our, our, ourselves here as a community. We've seen a massive rise in sectarian hate and violence across the Muslim majority world, especially in the Middle East in recent years. Is that something American Muslims are concerned about, should be concerned about? There are definitely tensions because whatever happens in the Middle East trickles down here, you know, to America as well. In the end of the day, most American Muslims do have some connections to quote unquote back home. And so it's impossible to ignore the conflict in Syria. It's impossible to ignore the conflict in Iraq and, and, and other places. Do you think enough has been done by Muslim leaders to challenge sectarianism in the US? I don't think that enough is being done and I think that there needs to be more tangible things that need to be done. And I think it is our responsibility to ensure that we are being inclusive, that when we are having discussions about American Islam or Muslim communities, 
do we look around the table? Are the Shias there? When we look at our conferences, when we look at our boards of our Muslim organizations, are we being representative and inclusive? And I think that the complaints that come from the Shia community are quite valid, that we are not as inclusive as we should be, and we are not inviting them to the table, which marginalizes people within our own community, right? Inclu the way we sometimes margin marginalize African-American Muslims in our community. So intra-community uh, relations are should be a top priority because that's the way we're going to build the strength and the unity of the Muslim community. Um, Yasser Qazi, some of your previous comments have haunted you over the years. Uh, so just for clarity's sake, you're a leading Muslim scholar. You said you've reached out, you've done efforts. Uh, do you consider Shias to be Muslims of equal course. to Sunnis? No, no debate there. Well, again, when you say equal, I have my beliefs. Well, they have their equally beliefs. Equally Muslim. Yes, of course, equally they are Muslims. Muslims. Yes, they are Muslims. I don't exclude them from from the from the fold of Islam. And you're not worried about people in the community saying otherwise. Of course, I'm tension? worried. Of course, there are tensions. That was the point. Okay. We have to be aware of these tensions and and mitigate them. You know, we have an activist and a scholar. Um, both of you working in the community in different ways. Many people, especially non-Muslims watching, will say, you know, who speaks for Islam? This question always comes up. Who is the Muslim I'm supposed to believe? Who's the one who's representative? Is it the scholar? Is it the activist? Who is it? We don't have a Pope figure. No one person speaks for Islam. We all have our communities. We all have our niches. And I think people need to understand, like nobody can speak for Protestant Christianity, nobody can speak for all of America, so too no one person can speak for Islam. I speak for a certain understanding and segment, and I speak again for what's passionate, for what I'm passionate about. And Linda has her own niche and what she's passionate about, and the, the two of us can work together even if her passions and her niches are slightly different than, than mine. Well, we're, we're not special, neither Dr. Yasser Qadi or myself. I don't have any special powers, and I think every American Muslim in this country has to find their voice and feel like they can stand up and speak for themselves. And the strength of the Muslim community is our diversity. We are the most diverse faith um, in, this, in this country. And that's what we do. And my job as an activist is I train other organizers or young people, Muslim college students, to stand up and sit on panels and, and speak. And I think that's also an area of, that needs improvement mm -hmm. in our community. We have too many celebrity activists, too many celebrity scholars, and we need to break that because really everybody has the chance to be a speaker uh, or, or to share their story. Yasser Qazi said he supports what you do 100%. Do you support what he does 100%? I support what he does 100% because I think he brings knowledge to the table. What I think that Dr. Qadi will agree with and many of the scholars is that they're not, per they're not perfect, and I think that they need to accept the constructive criticism that comes sometimes with some of their positions, and I'm willing to accept the constructive criticism that comes with my activism work from my community, which, as you know, I get plenty of all the time.